Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Sending the reward of Umrah to your departed loved ones or those unable to undertake the journey themselves is a profound expression of love and devotion. At Pure Passage we specialize in performing Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased family members, ensuring they receive the sacred gift. We understand the challenges and impossibilities some face in embarking on this spiritual journey. Pure Passage is here to alleviate the physical and financial burdens, offering a professional and reliable service that takes care of every detail. Let us help you fulfill this obligation for your loved ones with utmost care and attention. Make it happen today, contact Pure Passage and secure this immense reward by performing Umrah on behalf of those close to your heart. Bi'ithnillah. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, finally we're gonna tackle the claim that the Catholic Church invented Islam. It was the evil Vatican that is behind everything here, behind the creation of Islam. They influenced Prophet Muhammad wasalam, to create Islam. Sounds logical? Sounds rational? Absolutely. I wouldn't expect anything less coming from Christians. Guys, before we start the video, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy my content, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. The Islamic religion is huge today. Huge. It's also a very exclusive religion. Nobody from the outside is allowed in. What? If there are pilgrimages to Mecca, only those who are Islamic are allowed to go to these pilgrimages. Okay, that's a pretty ridiculous statement. Islam is the opposite of an exclusive religion because everybody is invited into Islam. I was born a Christian and I accepted Islam, alhamdulillah. It's not an ethnocentric religion such as Judaism, for example, where you have to be a proper Jew, which implies your mother being Jewish, which then in turn allows you to be part of the religion as a whole. This is not like that in Islam whatsoever. Everybody is welcomed within Islam. But yes, Islam has holy sites for Muslims. Boo-hoo! Within Orthodox Christianity you have holy sites exclusive only for Orthodox Christians. If you look at Mount Athos, for example, this is a holy site only for Orthodox Christian men. Not even women, Orthodox Christian women, are allowed to go there. So the religion of Islam is not exclusive whatsoever. Certain holy sites are. Wow, big deal. Exclusivity. If you look at a simple example out of everyday life, a boxing ring. That's pretty exclusive as well, because you have to be a professional boxer in order to enter the boxing ring in an official federation. Discrimination! This video acts all conspiratorial as if Islam is a secret society. No, it is not. Everybody is welcome. I hereby invite you to Islam. Evangelism in Islamic countries are totally forbidden. It's punishable and even can be led to death. Yeah, try to use a little bit of common sense here. I know this is hard. In an Islamic country where Islam is the state religion, pulling people out and away from the state religion would be considered a crime. Do you understand this? Apostasy within Islam would be comparable to treason in America. If you go against the state's narrative, you are committing treason and therefore this would be punishable by capital punishment. So it is only within the country's own interest, of course, to not get people disagreeing with the state's narrative. That applies to any type of country, to a liberal country such as America, to Germany, which has a certain narrative when it comes down to the past of Germany. When you disagree with that state narrative, then you get punished as well. You end up in jail. This is totally normal that a state wants to preserve its status. Therefore, if the state implies a state religion, i.e. Islam, you cannot go against Islam. Now who and what is Islam? Who Millions Islam? of people, including many of our favorite celebrities, are converting to Islam, many of which make their way to Mecca each year to pay visit and worship at the shrine of Muhammad. However, ah. 
There is another religion that propagate pilgrimage. All right, guys. So all the people you saw there, they're worshiping at the shrine of Muhammad. Apparently, we learned something new here. The point of the story is, first and foremost, most celebrities that he showed are actually born into Muslim families and the others reverted to Islam decades ago. So what is your point here, man? However, there is another religion that propagate pilgrimages as well, and that is Catholicism. The Catholic Church have pilgrimages to Lourdes and Miriam sites and to Fatima. I have okay. discussed the all right so this guy with his agenda somehow tries to display islam as evil and he wants to compare it to catholicism which in his worldview is evil as well apparently and therefore he makes the point catholicism has a pilgrimage islam has a pilgrimage therefore those two religions are evil not taking into account that pretty much every other religion has a pilgrimage as well i already mentioned orthodox christianity with their pilgrimage to mount Athos. but if we look into hinduism for example we find a pilgrimage known as tirtha yatra it's an integral part of hinduism with numerous sacred sites across india or you look into buddhism even Buddhists visit pilgrimage sites associated with the life of Gautama Buddha. In Judaism, you have an annual pilgrimage to the tombs of Jewish saints. And moreover, you have the visits to the Western Wall that we all have seen before. In Sikhism, Sikhs undertake pilgrimages to the Golden Temple, called Harmandir Sahib. And even within the Japanese Shinto religion, which doesn't have a central deity, doesn't have a god, it still involves a pilgrimage to various shrines, which they call Jinja. So now the claim of paganism, when we're talking about religions such as Buddhism or Hinduism, okay, I would grant that. However, coming from a Christian, talking about Judaism and Orthodox Christianity, are they pagan now as well? Pilgrimages is a symbol of the great pagan religions of the past. So we should be very careful and aware of these subtle devices. Okay. Who was Muhammad? Let's briefly Who was look. He? Muhammad Mustafa was born in 570 uh, AD. No, he did and died not. In this is absolutely amazing, man. As Muslims, we of course know that Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was born as Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Okay, that was his formal name. It was not Mustafa. However, Mustafa is an honorary title. It means the chosen one, for example, if you try to translate it. Therefore, this is an honorific title added to him. This guy, as pretentious as he is, acts as if Mustafa was a hidden secret name of Muhammad. And I'm telling you the whole name, dear Muslims, you don't know about this. He fled Medina in 622 AD after his wife Khadija death. Video, he was 25 years old and she was 40 years old when they got married. Her cousin Waraqwa was a Roman Catholic. What? All right, man. So first and foremost, the cousin's name was not Warwick. It was Waraka ibn Nafal. And that said, no, he was not a Catholic Christian. I don't even know how you come up with those things. Catholic Christianity was not a thing until after the schism, which happened 1054. So roughly 500 years later. 500 years later, you had the proper establishment of Catholic Christianity. During the time of the Prophet, may peace be upon him, the cousin of Khadija, all we know is that he was a Christian. Those Christians died out by now. Those were the proto-Christians. This has nothing to do with the Roman Empire, with Europe, with Byzantium, nothing of those sorts. So therefore, there was not a Catholic church established within the Arabian Peninsula the way that we know it nowadays within the European lands. This is an absolute lie. Mohammed's wife was also of the Roman Catholic faith. <laughs> yeah. She was super rich. <laughs> Thus, she had great wealth and what? power in her hand. Okay, man, this video never stops. It's absolutely ridiculous. So... Again, no, there was no such thing as Roman Catholicism within the Arabian Peninsula. So therefore, Khadija was not a Roman Catholic. What are you even talking about? Man? From what we know, Khadija was a businesswoman. I wouldn't consider her super rich. And therefore, she was an integral part of the polytheistic society at that time. How she worshipped, I have no idea. However, she wasn't even a Christian, let alone a Catholic. Thus, she had great wealth and power in her hands. Wow. She employed the young man Muhammad, whom she married. Muhammad later marched on Mecca in 630 AD, two years before his death, and four years before Omar became caliph. Muhammad, who couldn't write, had a scribe wrote down all that he heard and saw, which made the Quran different, well, apparently from all other religious writing, because it was a direct dictated book, yes. so it is not transcribed by a prophet. That's the teaching. That is, it's the very word of God. Therefore, it should always remain in the Arabic language. 
that is what is thought by Islam. This is actually the first correct thing that he says, so therefore respect where respect is due. Yes, we do believe that the Quran is the direct revelation from God, the direct word from God that has been preserved in Arabic, and therefore we keep it in Arabic. Good job! The Quran was compiled in 650 AD. The symbol of Islam is the sickle, moon and star. Where does this symbol comes from? And who is Allah? Of course, he had to ruin it right away. The crescent moon and the star symbol is not the symbol of Islam, despite popular belief. This is a later invention. It actually was invented by the Ottomans. And the Ottomans ruled from 1299 to 1922. So roughly 690 to 1300 years after the Prophet, may peace be upon him. So we're talking about roughly a millennia after the establishment of Islam. For thousand years, there was no moon and star symbol within Islam. However, through the last caliphate, through the Ottoman Empire, this symbol has been spread. And yes, sure, adopted by many Muslims around the world. However, it is still not accepted by every Muslim worldwide. And it is definitely not this symbol of Islam. Because in the Quran, we read that the religion has been perfected today when the Quran has been revealed fully the religion has been perfected during that time this symbol was not the symbol of Islam and hence you cannot make this claim tell us who is Allah. the crescent moon symbol was used since 2100 BC in paganism polytheism has extensively used the symbol of the crescent moon as far back as Abraham as oh, hundreds of archaeological help examples us, verify. Please. All right, genius. So archaeological findings show us that back in the day in some caves, people depicted moons. <sighs> absolutely mind blown yet again. Can you find stars within those caves as well? Can you find actual people hunting animals? I guess you have to stop eating meat, you dirty pagan. Go vegan today. So as I already mentioned, the moon and the star are a later invention. It is not the symbol of Islam, despite many people associating it with Islam nowadays. But even if you would grant for the sake of the argument, yes, the moon and the star are the symbol of Islam and we found depictions within caves of moons and stars. Where exactly is your argument? All the Arabs at the Kaaba in Mecca worshipped the moon god Hubal. Crescent moon is the official symbol of Islam on top of every mosque in the world and beside the Kaaba Not on top of the Makam Ibrahim. But well. It is the last remaining polytheistic remnant of ancient moon worship under a new sanitized monotheistic veil. <laughs> According to the okay genius, the last remaining polytheistic remained under monotheism. This logic can only come from a Christian, of course. We are taking a moon, we've seen this moon before, look at the moon, those people must worship the moon, they're disguising this polytheistic moon as monotheism. Christianity literally worships a god-man that has been sacrificed for you. Hinduism worships literally thousands of deities next to Brahman. But no, those are not pagan religions. It is Islam, of course, where the first pillar of its faith is the Shahab. La ilaha illallah. There is no God, but God. Pure paganism. According to the Encyclopedia of Religion, Allah was the moon god who married the sun goddess, and together they produced three goddesses who was called the daughters of Allah. Oh, Alat, Aluza, and Manat. It hurts Reference so much. point, Encyclopedia of Religion, mentioned that Reference Allah corresponded point. to the Babylonian God. Whilst responding, I have to remind myself over and over again that we're actually talking to Western white Christians and they're a little bit slow. So we really have to be cautious here and try to pre-chew the information. Look at your God, Jesus. He was Aramaic, right? So in Aramaic, how do you say God? You say Allah or you say Elah. Again, dear Christians, please try to hang with us here. We're speaking about Semitic languages. Therefore, Allah in Arabic simply means God, the God. That's it. And so therefore, yes, it is correct, of course. In pre-Islamic Arabia, in polytheistic Arabia, you had multiple deities that were attributed to God. 
Nevertheless, they still had a concept of a god that was higher than the other deities. Again, similar to Hinduism. You have Brahman and then you have all the other deities. So within the polytheistic worldview of those Arab pagans, it was Allah. Sure, it was God. But they attributed partners to him. And of course, they attributed certain polytheistic attributes to Allah as well, such as having daughters, for example. And therefore, yes, it is correct. There were different deities such as Alat, al Uzza, Manat, Wad, Suwa, Yaguth, Nasser, and many, many more. And the video creator is even correct that there was an entity called Hubal, which was worshipped by, yet again, the pre-Islamic pagans. But all of this was destroyed when Islam came, because Islam's message is worship no other god but god there is only one god and this god is not begotten nor does he beget therefore the polytheistic worldview of allah god having daughters was of course removed and not further attributed to god why is this so hard to understand bel arbal and the arabs knew of him long before muhammad worshipped him as the supreme god before Islam, oh, the Arabs recognized gosh. many gods and goddesses, and each tribe had its own deity. There were also nature deities. Allah was the god of the local Quraysh tribe, which oh, was Muhammad's tribe. So this guy is absolutely shameless. He just pulls information out of thin air. There is no proof whatsoever to declare that only the Quraysh tribe worshipped Allah. Quite the opposite. We find that within pre-Islamic Arabia, people worshipped Allah and attributed partners to him. You can find the same thing within Europe, for example. Certain pagan religions worshipping the All-Father that later then in Christianity became the Father. Is Christianity pagan because it has the Father just as the pagans had the All-Father? This is my direct question to you. I, of course, will make the argument that Christianity is pagan for other reasons, but just by that metric alone. Of course not. Even if you look into Tengriism, for example, which was found within the Balkans back in the day. In Tengriism, you had one central god and different manifestations and deities besides God. This is a common practice within paganism, attributing partners to God. And this is what Islam came to shatter and remove from the world, i.e. bringing the Arabs first and then the rest of the world into pure monotheism. I know, it's just too complicated, man. Before he brought Islam to lead his people out of their polytheism. Yes, exactly. The daughter of Allah was the inter-intercessors for the people. Yes. Again, their names were Al-Lat, Al-Udza, and Manat, yes. which were three goddesses. The first two daughters of Allah had names that were feminine forms of Allah. Even oh. though Muslims today... Man, I absolutely hate this video. Again, he's acting as if this is some great conspiracy. Okay, let's grant Al-Lat is the female version of Allah. Hmm, where have I heard something similar before? God? Goddess. That is your equivalent within the English language, man. If there is a male god, i.e. the father within Christianity, you can have a goddess, which is female in turn. He's acting as if he's exposing some unknown facts never heard before. Man, all of this is well documented. We all know about the pre-Islamic Arabia and their polytheism. This is why Islam came to eradicate it. This is crystal clear history within Islam. Every Muslim knows this. Even though Muslims today have denied this fact, what? they do not worship <laughs> oh, Allah's yeah, daughters what? and view them as pagan deities. Yes, Having we said are. that, it is important wow. to note that Muhammad himself <laughs> commanded his followers to offer prayers to these Allah's daughters. He later retracted it and blamed it on the devil. Source, trust me bro. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's mission was to invite people to the worship of Allah alone, without any partners or intermediaries. He faced considerable opposition and persecution from the Quraysh and others who adhered to the polytheistic beliefs of their ancestors. The message of Islam ultimately led to the establishment of monotheism in the Arabian Peninsula and beyond. This is the beautiful story of the beginning of Islam in a nutshell for you. Please learn something for a change. The whole point of Islam initially was to go against polytheism. If Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, would have called to polytheism, he wouldn't have done anything else than the ancestors did already, and therefore there would have been no space for the newly emerging religion of Islam. To cut a long story short, you're a liar. It is this true event in Muhammad's life 
which was the topic of Salman Rushdie's book, The Satanic Verses, mm. a book we certainly Trust do not recommend reading for its profanity and racism. <laughs> From a historical point of view, as a youth, Amazing. Muhammad engaged in the worship of all the 360 pagan gods in the Kaaba of Mecca. Yeah, again, what to expect of this absolute pathetic liar, just another false claim. Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, grew up in pagan Arabia. So much is correct. However, we have no evidence whatsoever that he partook in the pagan worship at the time. Quite the opposite, he would isolate himself in the cave where he would retreat for meditation. And this is where he received the revelation of the Quran. This is where the first chapter was revealed. Ikra, read. The point of the story is that this guy lists no sources whatsoever. However, we can read within the Sira, of course, about the Prophet Muhammad's life. And therefore, no, he was never an idol worshipper. Owned and run by the Quraysh tribe of which Muhammad was a member in good standing. As Muhammad grew up, Christians influenced him, monotheists, who condemned the polytheism at the Kaaba. This argument has been brought forth plenty of times, of course, in the past. Allegedly, Prophet Muhammad was influenced by Christians. Okay, first and foremost, this has been debunked a billion times, of course, because we cannot find the mistakes and incongruencies that we can find within the Bible in the Quran. The mistakes that are made within the Bible are not found in the Quran, hence makes us believe, of course, that the Quran is pure revelation. But moreover, if Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was truly influenced by Christians, why did he not start to worship the Trinity? The Quran warns exactly about the Trinity. Do not say Trinity. Do not attribute partners to God. Worship God alone. Jesus is not a God. All of this you can find within the Quran. Going against Christianity. So how does this make sense? If Prophet Muhammad was truly influenced by Christianity, we would have seen a Christianity 2.0. But no, we see a denial denial of Christianity as well, which makes the claim that Catholicism invented Islam even also more ridiculous, because Islam stands in opposition to Christianity and to Catholic Christianity. In Muhammad's life, the Christians convinced him that polytheism was wrong and sought to reject the 360 pagan gods he had grown up with. Man, don't you see that this example is absolutely irrational? If the Catholics truly convinced Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the 360 idols of the Kaaba are idol worship and Christianity is pure monotheism, why wouldn't Muslims nowadays worship a triune God? If they really convinced him that Christianity is pure monotheism, Prophet Muhammad looked at Christianity and he understood, hey, my tradition here is paganism, but Christianity is the true it is pure monotheism, why wouldn't he have accepted the Trinity? Simply ask yourself that it does not make any sense whatsoever. Islam from the get-go speaks out against the polytheism that we can find within Christianity, i.e. the Trinity. Through the influence and education of Roman Catholic Christians and his wife, they influenced Muhammad into the idea of monotheism. <laughs> However, again, there was no such thing as Catholic Christianity within the Arabian Peninsula. Because he was proud of his tradition of nationalist ethnic Arabism, Muhammad chose not to embrace an entirely new faith such as Christianity. Rather, he decided to reform his indigenous pagan religion. Muhammad the I'm genuinely getting a headache watching this video. Let's read what Islam says about nationalism. Here we can read a quote of the Prophet wasallam, when he said in anger, your father is the same and your religion is the same. And the Arabism of which you seem to be proud belongs neither to your father nor to your mother. Meaning Adam and Eve are the parents of all of you. Then he declared, he who propagates the creed of tribal solidarity or fights for its sake or offers his life for it is not of us. Or in the beautiful last sermon of the prophet, may peace be upon him, we can read, all mankind is from Adam and Eve. An Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab, nor a non-Arab has any superiority over an Arab. Also a white has no superiority over a black nor a black has any superiority over a white, except by piety and good action. Learn that every Muslim is a brother to every Muslim and that the Muslim constitute one brotherhood. Nothing shall be legitimate to a Muslim which belongs to a fellow Muslim unless it was given freely and willingly. So when we read such passages, we can see that Islam stands in direct opposition to nationalism, to Arabism. Yet again, this guy is just a liar. 
Islam is our universal faith, our universal faith for all mankind. Within Islam, we are all brothers and sisters. It does not matter where we come from. I come from the Balkan. I have Muslim brothers around here. They come from Pakistan. They come from Palestine. They come from Thailand. They come from Malaysia. It does not matter what your nationality is. And that is the beauty of Islam. To claim here that Prophet Muhammad changed the previous pagan religion into something Arab-centric is nothing short of slander. Disgusting. Shame on you. He decided to reform his indigenous pagan religion. Muhammad then took the highest pagan deity of the Kaaba in Mecca and selected it as the new monotheistic god of his. This god was considered the highest god in Kaaba among other gods. Okay. I'm going to relax and I'm going to try to speak to this man accordingly. Yet again, Allah, Arabic, simply means God, the God. That's it. Yet again, I ask you, why did Jesus say Allah or Allah? Moreover, another question, why do Arab Christians say Allah to God? The strategy of Muhammad was simple. Muhammad actually banned the other 359 pagan gods and preferred the remaining one to be the one and only one deity, rather than converting the Arab people to the monotheism of Christianity, what Muslims call Allah now. This is absolutely imbecilic, man. This is absolutely ridiculous. So instead of inviting the Arabs of the time to Islam, to pure monotheism, he should have invited them to worship the Trinity, to worship a man as God. Makes sense. Islam has therefore been born. The Roman Catholic Church. But before I go further, there are wonderful people, sincere worshippers, who believe with all their hearts they are Those doing are the right worshipers. things in these religions and okay. churches. But there is a wool. A blindness that only the Holy Spirit can untie. Ooh, Let's bridge. get back to it. Let's. The Roman Catholic Church have shown great similarities with Islamic religion. Hidden in the bowels of the abyss, a Jesuit name, Alberto Rivera. Honestly, I'm going to start smoking cigarettes after this video. I have such a headache. It's absolutely unbelievable. Catholicism and Islam couldn't be more different. I mean, just look at the Catholic Church to begin with. You see those idols everywhere. Of course, they call them icons, statues, and whatnot. Compare this to a mosque that is absolutely devoid of such things. But even theologically, of course, if you look at Catholicism, Catholicism is a reformed Christianity of sorts. First, you have the teachings of Jesus, and then later you have the bastardization of Paul. Paul was a Jew nevertheless, so he was the last Jew that was preaching Christianity, a form of Christianity. That then gets reformed yet again by the Greek church fathers and they influence it heavily with Greek philosophy. And then in the later stages, the Roman Empire, the Western Roman Empire, Latinizes Christianity and creates Catholic Christianity, the Catholic Christian Church. Compare that yet again with the theology of Islam, where we have direct revelation coming to one man, Prophet Muhammad, and this revelation then is manifested within the Quran. End of story. So how do you come now to the conclusion that Islam and Catholicism are pretty much the same? Islam and Catholicism are in direct opposition. Bera claimed that the Cardinal Bey, <sighs> the Jesuit general, personally instructed him in the origin of Islam. Okay. According to Rivera, yeah, must be true. the Roman Catholic 19, Church started 97. Islam on purpose okay. to yeah. take Abrabs under their control and to secure Jerusalem. Mm. However, this is highly ridicule in the literature, and they will state that nothing like that happened. I'm still going to say it to you. But though. let me digress. Please Who do. was first? Catholicism or Islam? Catholicism, of course. Okay, spiritually speaking, it would be Islam, of course, because we believe that Islam is the primordial religion of man that came with Adam, the first man, the first prophet to be ever created. He worshipped God alone. Therefore, this is when Islam started, we believe. It permeates throughout the prophets to this very day with the sealed message of the prophet Muhammad, i.e. Islam. But if we're talking about the history of Islam and we're going to say, hey, it started with prophet Muhammad, Fine, that was the year 610. However, Catholicism as we know it today, I already told you, was established 1054 after the Great Schism. 
But even if we would grant that you have the early church and you had councils such as the Council of Nicaea, fantastic, that was the year 325. At that time, however, Catholicism and Orthodoxy were still one church. Therefore, yet again, there is no point in talking about a Catholic church because it was non-existent at that time. Now, Catholicism had a major problem. The Orthodox Church had now split from the Roman Catholic Church during the second century. The Eastern Orthodox okay, Church did just not idiot. want to accept- and Now I realize I'm just wasting my time over here, absolutely, because this guy doesn't even understand when the Great Schism happened. He believes it happened in the second century, so 200 years after Jesus Christ. At that point, we didn't even have the Council of Nicaea, as I just mentioned. So the church fell apart 1054, way, way after the establishment of Islam 610. This is when the Orthodox and the Catholics separated. You absolute idiot. Church had now split from the Roman Catholic Church during the second century. The Eastern Orthodox Church did not want to accept the Roman Catholic Pope's claim that he was yes, the sole head of the church. Man. And war broke oh. out between the two groups, Orthodox Church and Roman Catholics. However, this has been resolved after the Russian Revolution. It has but never the two been factions was never Another merge line. again. Fantastic. This created a problem for Catholicism because true Christianity had spread in the Middle East. Now Rome had devised a plan to eradicate or replace true Christianity, the Orthodox Church in the Middle East. Okay. Coincidentally, Islam and Catholicism share common practices, from praying five times a day, are the rosemary beads, Aww. to the hamza. Catholicism oh, call it okay. God all anymore. seeing us. Okay, now this guy is confirmed with a stamp to be an absolute idiot. Of course, no Catholic prays five times per day. There is no such practice within Catholicism whatsoever. And then he speaks about the Hamsa, the all seeing eye. There is no all seeing eye within Catholicism, and there is no Hamsa. He meets the hand of Fatima here, of course, in Islam either culturally certain people within islamic countries do practice it and they do use the hand of fatima such as in turkey i've seen it before but it has nothing to do with islam of times a day are the rosemary beads to the hamza catholicism call it god all seeing eye even the nuns looks like islamic woman's attire oh wow like islamic and covered? catholicism are very patriarchal in regards it. to leadership and domination a lot of people won't agree with these type of teaching, but the hard facts are there, <laughs> written and hidden in books. The deception is very blinding and it's hidden uh, in plain yes, sight. Okay. You got it, bro. All right, guys. This is it for today's absolutely excruciating video, man. I need a nap now of 100 hours probably to recover from this absolute nonsense. Ridiculous, especially the later part there. He went totally off the rails. He said... Orthodox Christianity is the true Christianity within the Middle East. However, it is evil Islam and Catholicism because they are patriarchal. Not taking into consideration, of course, that within Christian Orthodoxy, the highest position you can achieve is... The Patriarch! So yeah, everything wrong with this video. I'm going to turn it off now. I had enough. Guys, if you enjoyed it, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box below to further support. And as always, may God, Allah, bless you all. Much love and peace.